scaling. Like yeah. everybody, every every client, they they always get nervous, yeah. like anxiety when they when it comes to scaling, right? Yep. So you found something that works. You're spending maybe a hundred bucks a day or something, and now you're telling them, "All right, let's do two hundred. Let's yep. do three hundred. Let's." Yep. Let's let's do this, and and then they have a ton of questions as they do do that. So, what happens? Yeah. So, and it's normal to be nervous. Um, I don't think that's abnormal at all, right? Right. Because um, no one wants to like spend more money and risk losing that money, <laughs> right? Um, so, typically, what happens? So, number one, scaling. All that really means is do more, right? Get more sales than you're currently getting, or more leads that you're currently getting, and Typically what happens, so here's usually the concern or the misconception of scaling. So let's say something is working really well at like $50 a day, right? Really, really low spend. Uh And you're getting a good return. Let's say you're getting a four return on ad spend. Oh, nice. Right? So let's, let's just pretend that's happening. Now, if you haven't scaled before or you're new to it, and I have made this mistake, okay? So I'm not, like, excluding myself. <laughs> it is very easy. The belief is, well, if I spend 50 why don't I just spend $5,000 and I should get <laughs> the exact same return of what I'm currently getting now of a 4X. Right. Unfortunately, that is not how it works. And it pretty much, I don't want to say it's impossible, but close to impossible to keeping, maintaining that ratio, that return, as you spend more. And the reason for that, and, and Blake can probably attest to this, is the audience, right? Yeah. So the way these algorithms work is when you're spending low spend, you're like forcing the algorithm to work harder to find that little pocket that's perfect match for your offer. But then what happens when you expand that audience? You, well, you start, you start having to boil over into the the people that aren't perfect for for the fit and that's fine yep there's more of those in fact that's a good thing yep because there's that's a much 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 bigger audience but instead of finding the people that are ready right now you're finding maybe people that are going to be ready tomorrow or next week or Or even in a few weeks or even in a few weeks or maybe the offer is not exactly what they need and they're comparing a couple of alternatives and it takes them some time to make a decision but all of that drives your costs up yep and so people in my experience people start seeing the uh, cost per acquisition go up yep which means their ROAS, return on ad spend, yep. starts coming down yep. and they start panicking because they think this is a trend that's eventually going to mean I'm losing money. So I'm spending all this money and I'm losing money. But in reality, it's a good thing. Yep. In my eyes, anyway. Well, and, and one of the things you have to keep in mind is, uh, it, in my experience, okay, so I'm just speaking in my experience, uh-huh. when you scale, you actually, so people, I think, incorrectly focus on the wrong part of the scaling. Yeah. You should be thinking about the second sale you're going to give them, the upsell, um, how many more orders they can make, and, and really focusing your energy on that, not the the advertising part. Because it's inevitable that the cost per purchase and the ROAS is going to go down the more you spend. But if you, if you only focus on the advertising part, what's going to happen is you're going to get scared every single time it goes up, and you're going to retract or, you know, mm-hmm. go back to what you were doing and you're not ever going to be able to grow that and get more customers that you're looking for. And so that's the mistake that I see constantly is when they're trying to scale going, well, it worked at 4X at 50. How do we make it work at $5,000 a day 4X? Yeah. Let's just keep looking at the ads over and over and over again, which is actually the wrong place to be working <laughs> on. You actually should be working on how do I increase the average order value or get them to buy sooner or get them to buy more often? That's come how you with, scale. Come up with more offers, yep. like follow-up offers. Yep. They bought this one thing. What's the next thing they should need? Yep. What's the thing after that? What's the thing after that? If you have two or three layers of different offers, oftentimes they're going up in price. Exactly. Then you you actually have legitimate business there. Well, and the advertising uh, tends to work out, right? Then mm-hmm. you're not as concerned. But... There is a transition where you have to almost practice going through this because um, every single time I've gone, yeah. I mean, I can think of many phone calls and conversations 
of the sense of panic yeah. that scaling brings mm-hmm. to the business owner. Once again, not saying it's not warranted. It's just because you start seeing, oh, man, I'm spending $1,000 a day, 2000 And what makes it <laughs> scarier, okay, this is a psychological game. What makes it scarier is when you keep seeing the receipts from Facebook or Google or any platform <laughs> hitting your account, reminding you how much is going out. It almost multiple times a day. <laughs> yeah, when you're scaling, you're seeing your account being yeah. hit over and over and over and over again uh-huh. in one day. Uh-huh. And that so without looking at revenues, the client will just keep seeing these because yeah, a lot of them have notifications set up yep. when they get like a spend on their credit card or something like that. And so when you're when you're spending two thousand dollars a day, which we, yep. we've we've been there, oh, yeah. uh, and I think Facebook, the most you can have it set at, unless you have an account like a big account with them or something, is to charge you every thousand dollars or something. Like that. So so you're going to see a thousand dollar purchase twice a day. Yep. And, and most people are thinking, I ah, I don't spend thousands of dollars, you know, thousand dollars twice a day on anything. Yep. Uh, and and you see that, but then you don't see the revenue numbers come in. Yep. And and so it's easy to panic. Well, and I've been there. <laughs> it's and, and I think it's totally normal. So yeah. we're not we're not like downplaying. Like you should just let it happen and not be concerned or worried. We're, we just want to prep you on this is what will happen and make sure you. This is like a psychological thing to where you make sure you're not turning things off because I've had this happen before. They're getting hit. We've got up to three thousand dollars a day. At at their threshold was nine hundred dollars. So that's three or maybe sometimes four transactions from uh-huh. Facebook a day. And what ends up happening is their return was working. Everything is working. The numbers are working out. Nothing's really changed. But they, they shut it down. Turn it off. Turn it off. It's, we're, we're spending way too much. we got to, like, reassess. Yeah. And they lose that momentum that they're building. And they're constantly starting and stopping, not because of logistically looking at their numbers to see if it's working, but just because of the fear of seeing anxiety, the, the, the money come out over and yeah. over and over, and again. that's that's real and it's and it's sure. normal. I think about it this way. So a few years ago, I got into my wife bought me a smoker, and I got into smoking, you know, briskets yeah. and, and pork butts and things like that. And there's a saying for anybody that that uh, that uh, gets into this: if you're looking, you're not cooking. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember the first time I, I cooked something that was long. It was going to take 16 hours. Yep. So I put it in the night before. I didn't sleep that night. I had a, thermo- <laughs> I had a thermometer in there. I, 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 we, we, and, and I had the thresholds on the temperature set so close yeah. that it was going off every half hour. And I would go out there yeah. and look at it and tweak things. But every time you lift the lid, the temperatures drop, drop yep. and, and change. And it turned out meh. But now, when I do that same cook... I get the get everything up to temperature. I throw the meat on. I I, I go to bed. Yep. And it is what it is in the morning, yep. and it turns out great. Great. But if you're looking, if like you keep tweaking things, yep. you 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 lose you lose all the heat. Yep. Right. Yeah. And so you're constantly cooling things down and and resetting the algorithm benefits and and things along those lines. Um, and so I'm not saying that doesn't mean you can't turn things off. But as part of a proper scaling campaign, you shouldn't really have these surprises yep. because you're not going to go from fifty to five thousand overnight. Yeah, exactly. You're going to kind of you're, you're going to make some in, incremental changes, and then you'll pause not necessarily the campaigns, but you'll pause scaling for a minute sometimes if something doesn't seem quite right, yep. and you'll massage at that point. But you don't want to keep just flipping things on and off, Turn swapping on, out on things and off, on and off. That's, all, all the time because you're, you're going to stop cooking at that, that point. Well, that's a recipe. That's a great analogy because that is true, right? When you're smoking things, what we're really saying is it's more about trust, Yeah, trusting the process, uh-huh. um, more so than trying to control too many things that ultimately, because you're trying to control them, makes it worse, mm-hmm. right? Not because of the intent, the, you have the right intent. I want to make sure everything works, but sometimes you have to let things run, and you know they got to cook. You got yeah. you got to let them cook, and yep. if you don't let it cook, you're gonna end up having not so good of <laughs> you know a, a finished product. And I think scaling is one of those. So here's here's basically what you want to do. Number one, if you want to scale, you should months before start mentally prepping and preparing what you will how you you will behave when these situations happen i think it'll be very helpful because 
if you plan out mentally like, okay, if I'm spending this much, what are my, my, my logical cutoff points? And only measure of that and nothing else. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to remove the emotion when it comes to this. So I recommend saying, what's the maximum amount of money that I will spend and what does that ratio have to look before and a time frame? How, you know, seven days or 14 days before I make this uh, judgment call. So that when you go in, you're only, you're doing it in a non-emotional way. You're just saying, if I spend $1,000 and I don't get at least $2,000 back and it's like $1,500, then I'll cut it off, right? Or if I spend $5,000 and I don't get $10,000 back, I'll cut it off. Having specific numbers that you can just look at and just say, okay, I hit my threshold point. And what typically helps, I, I will have clients do this drill, is to go, if you were to spend what, what X amount of dollars, you're not losing all the spend. Right. That's the part that people, like our minds trick us. Mm-hmm. So if you spend $1,000 and you get 1800 in sales, you didn't lose $1,000, right? You may have just lost a couple hundred. Yeah. Based on whatever business model, yeah, you're well, running. and that and that's the that's the thing. Like, think about it that way. It, it's it's hard to say, oh, we lost money. If I spent a thousand dollars and I only sold nine hundred fifty dollars worth of product, yep, I lost fifty bucks, and yep. it's not even a loss. You learned a lot, and yep. you gained a bunch of customers. Yep, right. You gained a bunch of people on your email list and everything. You can't keep doing that because you're going to run into some cash cash crunch problems. But if you have a day like that. That's not the end of the world. Exactly. I've blown fifty dollars in a day on stupid stuff oh, yeah. before, with it oh, <laughs> and didn't get any customers out of it because it was fifty bucks on I don't know I, I don't know food or yep. something. Yeah, or I mean this cool toy at Best Buy or something, like that. and then didn't make me any money back. Yep. I didn't get any customers or anything. So think about it that way. Uh, you are going to have some fluctuations. You can't have consistent days where you're under yeah. you, where where your ROAS is under one. Yep. But if you have a single day like that, but all of your other days are good, that's not time to panic. Yep. That doesn't mean things are going south. That means, I don't know, maybe there was a big news story that day. Yep. Or maybe something happened in the lives of a lot of your your audiences. Like those things happen. Yep. If you had, um, I mean, if you had a massive news story like, a, a war started or something yeah. like that the the day russia invaded ukraine i yeah. guarantee you everybody's ad spend was l- way less effective that day oh yeah than than on, or on other days right even recession yeah right the talk of a recession people cannot even i mean everyone gets impacted by that but there some people may not even really have to worry about that mm-hmm. but just the the fear that comes from yeah. We're going into recession. Will make people shrink. Right. Right. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't buy that, even though I can't afford it. Yeah. It's it's a natural like knee jerk reaction, mm-hmm. which you know I saw quite a bit with uh, buyer behavior for like two weeks when it's just being pumped on the news every day. Uh-huh. Gas prices to all time high. The cost of meat is this, and the cost of food is that, mm-hmm. and everything's gone up. You could see a, a shift in consumer behavior for a couple of weeks, but now it seems like. People are realizing, oh, it's it's yeah. part of life. It's there, okay. We're there's fine. there's all there's always fluctuations, and oftentimes, like with a little bit of creative thinking, without turning off your campaigns, you could use those new stories or use those concepts yep. in some new ad creative and yep. see how that works. Right? Yep. There's well, lots of ways you can kind of manage that, but you're not losing money per se if you spend a thousand dollars and you only made nine fifty back. Yep. You gained a bunch of people, qualified people for your email list for your next product. Um, and that's not really a bad thing. Obviously, we, you want to be profitable sure. all the time, but if you have one of those days, that's well, fine. Well, I'm glad you brought that up too because the other um, almost unrealistic expectation is that every single day will have the exact same ratio of returns, which that's why I typically recommend look at seven days minimum, but more like 14 mm-hmm. or maybe even a month. To, to, to let it all kind of average out and go, what was our return? Right. Because if you do it day by day, what's going to happen is maybe one day you do 5X and you're like, this is unbelievable. And then the next day you do 0.8. You're like, the sky's falling and you, <laughs> and you just t- turn it on and off. But if you just let it run and then another day is three, another's two and a half, another's four, you average that all out, it's actually a pretty solid campaign. Mm-hmm. 
But if you're looking at it like the stock market, like your day trader, and you're constantly saying, oh, we just lost money in the last hour, it's, you're not going to get anywhere yeah. because you're going to constantly be starting and stopping, and that's not how it works. Right. And I would tell you, if you're going to put effort into something, like if you have this nervous energy and this is like stressful for you, and you're going to like, put the effort into coming up with a next product yep. that once they've purchased this offer, yep. what's the next thing? And that next thing doesn't have to be a big step up in price. It can be, but it could be just a little mini add-on that you can follow up with a quick email campaign. Yep. That will make you more money than trying to watch your uh, ad spend hour by hour, minute by minute, and keeping an eye on all of that stuff. Uh, so, so put your effort into that. I would also look at shifting gears just a little bit. I think a lot of people look at the wrong numbers. Advertisers and media buyers, we talk a lot about cost per acquisition, ROAS, return yeah. on ad spend, CPMs. Those are important metrics. But as you scale, the the way those metrics should be interpreted changes. Yep. And so what I think a lot of people should look at is instead of looking at those metrics, because those metrics will get worse as you scale, yep. because they have to get worse as yep. you scale. But I would look at the total profit amount. Yeah. Not margin, not percentage amount, yeah. but like total profit amount. So for example, let's just say I'm spending $10,000 a month and I'm making $10,000 a month uh, on that ad spend. And so that's my ROAS is a 2X yep. and that's great. But next month we spend $1,500 and I, I make, um, you know, uh, 12,000, 13,000 on profit. My ROAS is less, yep. but the actual profit is in the bank is more. And your overhead didn't go up yep. other than that ad spend. It's yep. not like you had to hire new staff yep. to, to deliver or whatever. You just had that ad spend. So your actual profit dollar amount yep. is more. And I would like to make $12,000 in profit more than I would like to make $10,000 exactly. in profit. That's a bigger number. Yep. And so you want to kind of look at that. Uh, as well, and if you're, and then you also got to realize that's just the first part of your marketing machine. Yep. And we've talked about this several times, but you have email follow-ups, you have next offers, you have all of these different things. Yep. Where as we focus on this one piece, because that's where everybody gets started, that's fine. But when you want to start building out the the full business, the marketing machine, you have these other products, these yep. other offers, more bundles, more promotions, holiday promotions, all of those things. And putting effort into those things are what take your $12,000 a month on your 15K ad spend yep. and turn that into $24,000 a month profit on yep. the 15K ad spend. Yep. Is that extra stuff that you're, you're adding on because the profit margins on those things is significantly yep. higher because you didn't have to... Acquire them through paid uh, ads. You, you've already acquired them. Yep. You've already spent the money to acquire yep. the customer. You have them now. So that's the secret that a lot of the uh, the people out there that are scaling and scale big, um, that's what they're actually focusing more, most of their effort on um, because I've, I've heard this before from clients like, yeah, I talked to this one guy and he, you know, he he spent X amount of dollars and got a, a gigantic return, right? Something like some outsized return. You go to find out, well, he sent emails and he's hitting a huge list of people that he already acquired. Mm -hmm. So that's why he's able to get such a outsized return because he technically already bought those customers. Yeah. And so the numbers are going to be skewed on that. And so you have to think that's how they're doing it. They're not. There's no secret way that you can unlock. You know, like a video game, where you can, like a cheat code, where you can go, all right, there's a secret audience out there that if I just tap into it, I'll be able to get 1,500 ROAS on something that I'm doing, unlimited. And if I can just find the pot of gold, then I'll, my life will be saved. Just doesn't work that way. No, no matter how many, <laughs> no ma matter how many, just this one quick tip or this secret yep. or how many, you know. Whatever Doesn't secrets exist. books you buy, Doesn't I, exist. it's it, those are hooks to get you to buy. Yep. But, um, but yeah, just th there's no magic yeah. code to that. And and the people that are saying they have this massive ROAS, yep. they're using that as a hook to kind of get you in. Fine, but oftentimes I I, I was watching one where where the person said, oh, the ROAS was 
I don't know, 10,000. Yeah. Uh, and when I dug into the story a little bit, they were running some ads to a small geographic area to get people to come to a seminar to buy uh, condos in a new oh, condo yeah. complex. Yeah. And so they needed, you know, they had 100 people in the room. They they, they ran ads. Maybe they only ran $1,500 in ads. Yep. And they sell two condos. Yeah. And their ROAS, $1,500. To a million because yep. they're $500,000 condos. My ROAS was crazy. Yeah. Here's the secret. But they don't like. Yeah, but most people aren't selling condos. And no, that's yeah. not a pure ROAS yeah. because there's all this overhead yep. in selling condos. Like yep. there's all of these construction costs and real realtor fees. It's just not accurate. Like, so we recommend build a business. <laughs> don't listen to anyone who says you're going to get some outsized <laughs> returns. It's not going to happen. You can get very solid returns from the the business fundamentals which is of course what most people do not want to hear just like exercise and, yeah. and eating healthy there's no secret there's no nothing it's it's just basic fundamentals you just got to do the same thing yep. when you're building your business so we really apologize to let you down <laughs> that there isn't some secret <laughs> trick or hack to get where you want to be but if you just Stick with the process. Um, you can have a very successful business. Trust me. Amazon is not hacking the system with some secret ad campaign. They've got a very strong business model that's well thought out from the acquisition all the way to fulfillment to return customers. If if they do it, you probably should too. Well, and they didn't do that overnight. Exactly. Right? Like it's going to take you some time to yep. get there. They, they built out – they're still building out big sections of their fulfillment arm of the business. Right, and so you build those parts and you optimize those parts as you go. That's why it's called building a business. Yep. But yep. Uh, anyway, let's wrap this up, Greg. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, GregMarshall.co, and you can book a free strategy session. And what about you? Uh, BlakeBuse.com/sm3 is the best way to get in touch with me. All right. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye.